Okay, call to order. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. McKenna? Here. Mr. Dice? Mrs. Ling? Present. Mr. Lemack? Here. Mr. Stepanovich? Here. Dr. Lee Korn? Here. Mr. Spadero? Here. Mayor Sinan? Here. Pledge allegiance? Aye. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ah, oh, Mr. Morrison. Yes, sir. Any unlisted amendments? One, uh, Mr. President, uh, I'd like to add a uh, executive session for a legal matter this evening. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Consent calendar items. Approval of minutes. Anybody like to make a motion? I'd like to make a motion to approve the April 20, 2022 minutes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, uh, comments by Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Mr. Spadero. I'm, I'm going to change it up just a little bit here as some of the other firefighters are just arriving. I'm going to ask uh, author Doreen Putnam to come forward as I read a proclamation, and her family or friends or whoever is with her is welcome to come along. Thank you. Thank you for Are being you here. Coming? No. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Come it's on. okay. Come on. Come no, on. All right. Uh, this is a meritorious citation to Doreen Putnam for service as a community educator for the Alzheimer's Association. Writing a children's book about such a heart wrenching topic, topic demonstrates your dedication to patients and families who are navigating Alzheimer's and dementia. Murraysville thanks you for your devoted service to the community. Oh, thank, you thank, very thank you very much. We'd like to say a few words. As long as you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, can I, can I put this back sure, up? would you like to do that? That would be yeah. great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Your grandpa doesn't know that. <laughs> Thank you for the citation tonight. I appreciate that very much. Um, this is a book, as you can tell. Uh, about it's a children's book, middle school aged, uh, for uh, children of families who have Alzheimer's disease or some other form of dementia. This particular story relates to Alzheimer's, but behaviors of the grandmother in the story and the family reactions uh, that we read about are very typical of other forms of dementia, such as frontotemporal degeneration, vascular dementia, some of Parkinson's, some of the others. Um, I started this, the thought process of this book back in 2007, <laughs> and it's taken me through COVID to actually have the time to do this. Um, it's a book, as you, you know, thumb through it, you can see the illustrations are phenomenal for children, and the storyline is really very realistic of what happens with Alzheimer's families. Uh, do any of you have someone in your family or know of someone that has Alzheimer's disease? Yes? No? Yeah, okay. Uh, then you will relate to this, uh, whether it's a family <coughs> member, a friend, a neighbor, a coworker, perhaps. Alzheimer's disease is, is something that is affecting more than 6 million people in the United States right now. 
And because we don't have medication to prevent the disease, control it, or reverse it, by 2050, we're looking at that number of 6 million moving to about 18, 15 to 18 million people. And our healthcare system is overburdened now. I can't imagine what it's going to be like by then. But the story takes place um, over a weekend. Two BFFs, best friends, discover that both of their grandmothers have Alzheimer's disease. And one girl is staying overnight with the other gal. And they begin to talk about what it is that they're ex experiencing what they're seeing, what they don't understand, the confusion that they're experiencing as well, and the frustration and anger that they're feeling as young girls in a family setting where their, their grandmama is just not functioning properly. And they kind of know she has Alzheimer's. They have that, that uh, terminology, but they don't necessarily know what it all means. And so through the conversations that they have, uh, they're able to discuss that and realize that, you know, they, as one of the, the pictures indicates or illustrations, they become pinky friends. They know that they can talk with each other about what's happening to them. I wanted the book to be a, basically an educational tool, which is exactly what it is. Um, I have a uh, separate program. It's called Kids Stepping Up Project. And through that project, I will be getting grant money to distribute this book um, free to uh, libraries in the area in Allegheny and um, Westmoreland County, uh, as well as the Alzheimer's Association across the country, some of our schools, hospitals, uh, clinical staff, that kind of thing. So I, my goal is to make sure that this book gets into the hands of the people who are dealing with Alzheimer's um, families and their support team uh, as much as we possibly can because this is an important issue. And many times our children are not included in the conversations about Alzheimer's, and they really should be because they're part of the family, they're seeing what's happening. And in the tail end, as the, the cover indicates, um, that uh, Grandmama and Megan have a chance to realize how much they love each other and to support each other through this whole process. So um, I do have copies with me if anybody is interested. Uh, but also, you can get my book online at, at my website. So I would encourage you, if, whether you have someone in your family that has this disease, um, I'm also encouraging people to buy a copy or two give to your pastor, to give to your local library. I've already given one copy to the library next door, so they do have it. Um, but if you are aware of anybody that can benefit from this, I would encourage you to look at my website and um, purchase one or two. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? What's your, what's your website? It's uh, In the second page of the book is a business card. So it's there. You feel free to take those if you'd like to. One is for my book, and the other is for my business. I'm an Alzheimer's and dementia practitioner, and I've been in practice for almost 30 years now. So I meet one-on-one -on -one with families from um, the time when they are suspicious that something is wrong all the way through to the end stage and, and death uh, with placement in memory care communities or nursing homes. I have national and international certification. So I'm able to train um, staff in hospitals, nursing homes, memory care communities. And I do a lot of community education for the Alzheimer's chapter here in Pittsburgh, but as well as Delaware Valley chapter, which is that little corner where New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and New York kind of come together uh, geographically. But uh, this is a field. I've retired twice from this field. But uh, there's so much need, and the families need so much help. And it's difficult for them to get in to see physicians who can work with them on a regular basis. Yes? Putnam, I uh, work part-time. Uh, a friend, a co-worker of mine, uh, her, uh, his wife has uh, Alzheimer's. Yes. And she's functional. Okay? Yes. And also she's driving still. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't know how long, but what is the situation with Alzheimer and driving? Is there a... Yeah. That's a very good question. Thank you. Um, it all, every situation is different. There's no question about that. So you have to look at each individual situation. When a patient becomes 
a danger to themselves or someone else on the road, that's one point when you begin to take the keys and the car away. The other thing that happens with um, some of the forms of dementia, and it can be Alzheimer's as well, is people can read a stop sign and they can say the word stop, but the brain is no longer able to process what the word stop means. So they go through the red light, they go through the stop sign, and then they become a, a hazard on the road. I think you know, taking the car keys away in the car is one of the most difficult things for family members to have to do. Considering placing them in a residential facility or bringing in home care is another major point that's very difficult for families to accept. And the, the third is when the patients no longer recognize their family members and don't know them by name any longer. But driving is a problem. Uh, you can have a doctor sign off to say that this person is no longer able to drive, and many families will rely on a physician to do that. Uh, you can also have them take a test through DMV and other private uh, companies uh, and make that decision. Yeah, he and his wife, and not to prolong this, but he and his wife have uh, handhelds, if you will, iPhones, and basically he is able to identify, because she will call him at times and say, I'm lost. And he can identify exactly where she is and tell her where to go. So. She's saying that she's lost. It's too late. She should not be really? driving. Yeah. Okay. I can just give you one example. Um, when I was, I was working for the Alzheimer's Association as director of education in central New York when we lived there. And at that point in time, this person was not one of our clients, but was a story that we were aware of. A grandfather and his wife and a granddaughter left the state of Virginia. He was a very strong-willed person and would not pull over to ask for help. And they ended up on a lumber road in the state of Maine until they ran out of gas. And the granddaughter finally left the car and went to, you know, secure help. <coughs> so there are some not very pretty stories out there, some horror stories of things that can happen to people when they get lost. Uh, so it's difficult to take those car keys away. But many times the doctor can be the so to speak, the bad guy or the bad gal, <laughs> and making that decision on behalf of the family. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, I just think, uh, to her point, uh, Mrs. Putnam, thank you so much, but we have a lot of people at home that are listening that may want to get this book, so uh, just to read your website, sure. it's www.d, as in dog, c as in cat, putnamconsulting.com, uh, just in case any of our... The, o the other location where they can get it is uh, the website. It's www.grandmamadoesn'tknowme.com. You just take the sometimes out of the front of it. Uh, so either of those two locations. Okay. Uh, they can be purchased. Thank, you. Thank you. I have a quick question. Yes. Is the state notified about this person that they can't drive anymore and do they take their license off them? They can do that, yes. But then the family has to go to them in order for that to happen. Unless there's an accident, uh, you know, if there's an accident mm -hmm. and um, either the police or some other authority uh, realizes what the situation is, they can, certainly can do that, yes. Does the doctor ever notify the state? No, I, I don't know the like answer. The doctor said you can't drive anymore. Does he notify anybody about that? I believe that in most cases they will do that. Some of them um, don't, but uh, they should. And in most cases, they do, do do that so that the state is aware of it. Okay. Thank you. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just pass those books down. Uh, I'll be glad to pick them up at the end. I should. We have one other topic tonight, and. I'd like to ask all the firefighters to come up here and stand with me, whether you like it or not. <laughs> Is there a price on it? I didn't. You're always standing behind this community, all of you. That's what we count on you for. Seth? 20 bucks. I'd like to welcome many of our firefighters here tonight and many who are missing because one of the departments is having training nights, so they're 
they're working at their station, but all, uh, we're, we're represented well here. This is a proclamation of the mayor of the municipality of Murraysville, Westmoreland County, Pennsylvania. Firefighters Recognition Day, May 4th, 2022, proclamation number 21722. Whereas the municipality of Murraysville recognizes three fire departments within its borders. Murraysville Fire Company number one was founded in 1927. White Valley Volunteer Fire Department founded in 1949 and Sardis Volunteer Fire Company founded in 1957. And whereas the numerous residents who work, volunteer, and train as firefighters proudly call Murraysville home, and whereas in an effort to recognize our firefighters for their devotion to duty and commitment to training, the municipality supports the mission of the National Fallen Firefighters Foundation to honor and remember America's fallen firefighters, assist their families in rebuilding their lives, and prevent firefighter injuries and deaths. And whereas Murraysville is proud of its firefighters and challenges each to inspire the next generation to continue to serve. Now therefore, I Regis J. Sinan, Mayor of Murraysville, Pennsylvania, in concert with the Council of the Municipality of Murraysville, do hereby proclaim May 4th, 2022, as Firefighter Recognition Day in the municipality of Murraysville and encourage all citizens to support our firefighters on this day and throughout each year. In witness thereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the municipality of Murraysville to be affixed this fourth day of May in the year of our Lord, 2022. Congratulations and thank all of you for being here. Much appreciated. I think, that, and I think our community appreciates you very much. It looks like Pastor Dan wants to say something. Uh, Jason, uh, go ahead, Jason. Yeah, I mean, if I could, the, the reason that, that we brought this uh, proclamation about is that uh, Murraysville Fire Department uh, started off with a program to uh, honor and recognize our deceased past members. Uh, we currently have a uh, list of 52 members that were either active or life members at the time of their passing uh, from our inception in 1927. Um, so we didn't have a formal program in place, but we went through and we got some grave markers to go through and place at their grave site, uh, if they, they have a grave site, or if we can contact any uh, family members that are still remaining and give these markers to the family members if uh, their grave site is elsewhere. Um, we also have flags to go out and place uh, with the grave markers, but uh, we wanted to have a, a catalyst program to um, uh, kick off our memorial program, and I thought what better way than to, to recognize all the firefighters within Murraysville, uh, whether it's from our three volunteer departments, uh, export that comes in and supports uh, all the time, as well as uh, Murraysville Medic One, and uh, any other departments that come in and assist us on a regular basis. Uh, there's also members in our community that do this uh, outside for uh, a career. And um, you know, there's just no better way than to, to set aside one day out of the year uh, to recognize those individuals. Um, so that's why we picked May 4th as International Firefighters Day. And uh, it just kind of fell in with the program. Thanks, Jason. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank all of you again. I appreciate it very much. And the community appreciates you very much. On nights like last night when you're called out, four, five, and 25 times for different calls. I don't think they realize it until it's in their neighborhood or in their backyard, how often you guys are out in the middle of the night or middle of the afternoon or 24, seven, 365. So we appreciate it very much. Thank you for being here. The mayor, you were a firefighter how many years? Almost 20. So almost 20 years. Yeah. So you have the heart for the fire department, first response. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> Never leaves you. <laughs> I almost say it's like a disease. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes, sir. Well, thanks for bringing this to my attention, Jason. I appreciate it very much. I'm glad we could have you all here tonight. I appreciate your help. Appreciate your help and yep. everyone single. With, you know, everyone that puts help and time into this. Yep. So. I'm sure the council and the staff appreciate you very much here, also, as the, as does the entire community. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you.
And be careful. Be careful out there. <coughs> I can get you all. John, do you all want to copy this proclamation? Get one for all your stations? Yeah, it wouldn't be. It would be. Yes, okay. ma'am. Nice meeting you. Can you make me two more of these so each of I can get one to each fire station? No, no, no. Yes, ma'am. Good night. Okay, I, I do have a few other announcements also. Okay, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. <laughs> Wait for... Jim to get them up there for me. Now the first, the first one is uh, the park survey and park improvement discussion. Uh, attend our neighborhood park meetings. As you can see with all the rain we've had, the first one at Kowalczyk Park has already been rescheduled for May 16th. Heritage Park, May 10th. Bear Hollow Park, May 17th. Chambers Park, May 24th. Pedora Park, May 31st. All the meetings are at 6 p.m. Please feel free to show up at the parks for your, any input you have. Uh, if you have any questions prior, the municipal number 724-327-2100, extension 115. Uh, next is a Penn State Extension Eat Your Weeds course, Saturday, May 7th at 10 a.m. Register for this free program at www.parecreation.com. Instructor is Barb McMillan. It's at the Wetlands Pavilion, Murraysville Community Park. Uh, Be Smart Gun Safety Program. Be Smart for Kids is an educational public health campaign for adults about safe gun storage. This program will take place on Wednesday, May 25th at 6.30 p.m. at the Murraysville Community Center, 3091 Carson Avenue, Murraysville, PA 15668. Uh, Chalk the Walks coming up by uh, on May 14th. Uh, last year we had a tremendous turnout for this. The turnout's a little slow this year, so how about uh, spreading the word around <coughs> out there? The kids who did participate had a great time last year. Again, Murraysville Community Park, May 14th, 2022, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, this is for your artists who like to uh, decorate your driveway at home. They'll get their own little section to decorate with the chalk. You know, so, to some parents this bothers them, but rain washes it away, just remember. Um, lastly, the AAUW Used Book Sale 2022 will be May 5th, 6th, and 7th. The sale will be held at the Murraysville Community Library in the meeting rooms. Uh, uh, adjacent, the meeting rooms are actually adjacent to the library. Uh, that concludes my comments for tonight. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Mr. Morrison. I have Do you no have any comments, comments this evening, Mr. President? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, community input. Do we have any? <coughs> <coughs> thank you. Okay, we have one. Is that Matthew? Act, what's that? Ackman. Yep. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Matthew Ackman at 4211 Bulltown Road. Uh, the item I'd like to, I got a couple items I'd like to address. To start off with, uh, this is an amazing uh, uh, meeting today. It's just really neat to see, have the fire department recognized in, in the uh, presentation there about the Alzheimer's patients. I just, I'm very impressed with that. And, you know, impressed with the community on you know, just the kind of people that we have here. I just wanted to say that first. But um, to get down to business, Department of Homeland, Homeland Security uh, just announced they made a dis disinformation governance board. So now the government, the federal government's in the business of what is true and what's not true. Uh, and considering the fact that the federal government considered the Trump-Russia collusion as being true, and then the Hunter Biden laptop uh, event being false goes to show that this should not happen. This should not stand. So I asked, I asked the board and the community as a whole to contact your representatives to, to, to push back against this. Um, and also, specifically with the city, as, as I've come here many times, uh, warning about different events and different things that the federal government's doing, uh, if push comes to shove, and we do have federal agents coming after our own civilians, is the community ready to defend uh, civilians from this overreach of the federal government? 
Um, and also, if we, as we have uh, elections coming up, to encourage everybody to go out and vote. Elections do have consequences. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about uh, is the more I learn about what's happening with the school systems all co across the country, it becomes pretty nerve-wracking uh, with what's going on. And uh, this push with tra transgenderism going all across the country just does, it, it's, it's very unhealthy and it's not good. In the end, people who identify with transgenderism overall has about a 40% suicide attempt rate. The only other group of people that has that kind of suicide attempt rate are schizophrenics. Uh, so it, this is a very serious issue. This is something that we should, do not want to have in our communities, considering that the school is the crown jewel of the city we're seeing a lot of this going on. So I ask the community to get involved and to, to be aware of what's going on so we can keep our children safe. Um, and that is, uh, that is all I have for the evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Nobody, anybody else would like to say anything? That's it. Okay. Liaison comments. Jason, want to start with you? Yeah, sure. So I um, attended the uh, library meeting. As Mayor uh, Sinan mentioned, there is the AAUW uh, book sale going on. Um, that's, that's all week. Um, this Thursday, there is a, uh, a Cinco de Mayo story time session. Um, that is um, in, at, um, you're encouraged to register. That starts at 10 a.m. Um, on Thursday. And then the last, uh, last thing to mention of events is at 11 a.m. On, um, on Saturday, uh, there is a, uh, a craft project to make a, uh, f um, a flower uh, arrangement for, uh, for your mother. Um, so again, register for those. Uh, from a business standpoint, the, uh, the numbers or statistics of um, library um, usage are up, which is a good thing. Um, everything's going well there as far as uh, um, how they are serving the community. Okay, very good. The uh, Parks Foundation and the Planning Commission will meet next week. Okay, Carl, thank you. Amy. I've got a, a bit of a lengthy one and a bit of a doozy. Um, pension, no surprise, the fund is still not doing great. That's the, that's the little piece. Um, Frank Burnett reached out to us. As you all know, he runs Morrison Fiduciary and he's been working with us for I don't know how many years, an extremely long time. Uh, he shared with us the merger, he announced the merger of Morrison Fiduciary Advisor with Andco Consulting Company. They go by the name Andco. Uh, he said that the merge is slated to close this January, 2023. He describes them as a national institutional consulting firm with a focus on servicing public and Taft-Hartley plans. Uh, Mr. Burnett believes that this merge will, be, will greatly expand the depth of services offered to their clients, while also providing the customized service philosophy and sharing similar fiduciary values. So he doesn't, he believes it's a good thing for municipality. Uh, he also notes that the transition has been designed as roughly a two-year process with uh, Mr. Morrison himself maintaining direct responsibility for the Morrison institutional relationships through the end of 2022. And then and co handling the consulting efforts starting January 1st of 2023 but continuing with Mr. Burnett's involvement as support for as long as necessary. Uh, and he also let us know that the service team for our area will be based out of their Pittsburgh office. Their headquarters is in Florida. We were invited to a site visit, so okay. tie down. Thank you. Very interesting. Just for the record, there's no relationship there between <laughs> the <Morrison laughs> and no. James Morrison. Yep. Okay, Jamie, Lynn. Yes. Okay forgetting to turn on my mic so I attended the May 2nd school board meeting where all directors except Bill Yant were present superintendent Prano was voice called in and assistant superintendent Pinos was present there uh, was recognition of four graduates that were entering into various military programs a new program for professional development the science of letters was presented and the 20 2022-2023 capital plan was discussed and a 500,000 deficit with a one and that includes a 1.8 mil tax increase was predicted. The final budget will be available on June 10th on their website and a hard copy will be available for review in the administration office for 20 days. May 18th will be the next curriculum committee and the next finance committee is May 26th 
the next committee of the whole meeting is June 6th. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Matt? Uh, Parks and Recreation, um, it's next week is technically the meeting, but kind of this month the mayor put up before that we have all the meetings at the uh, individual parks uh, that are each Tuesday throughout the month of May. So um, as he said, please participate in those, anyone that wants to come give any input for it. Um, that is mainly what is they're, they're dealing with going on right now. Uh, one of the things we just had in the past is just wanted to thank everyone involved for the opening day for FRA baseball. Uh, the parks, uh, recreation, parks and Recreation Department uh, were instrumental in helping with that. Jim Morrison, thank you for his help as well. And uh, Bill Piano and his uh, team of uh, public works guys. It was just, it was impossible with the weather to try and make that happen. And uh, I think... Uh, Everyone, the mayor was there and some of us from council. It was a really, really nice community event. So um, just want to thank everyone involved with that, which that was uh, kind of a kickoff of uh, the start of the use of the parks for this year. So that's about all we have. Hey, thank you, Matt. Yep. <coughs> just to mention, there was also a, uh, this past Saturday, the opening of the Busy Beaver uh, and the plaza, what used to be the movie house in Delmont. And... Uh, Interestingly enough, too, is that they had a couple ponies. They had a Marilyn Monroe look-alike parade, if you will, and it was uh, very heavily attended. So, yeah. There was recognition given to the, quote, Marysville Council. Okay. Very, it, it was very busy. I mean, you couldn't find a parking space there. You know, how, as big as that lot is, yeah. and the line went completely around the building, people waiting to get the free gift certificates they were given a uh, fifty dollars. First two hundred people. What's right. that? Yeah. First two hundred people. Yeah. yeah. But they, they also donated, they were very philanthropic in yeah. a lot of their donations that they gave to local community services, firefighting company, I believe from a different Hill, organizations they had Boy Scout out. Troop, two oh eight. It was it was very nice to see they've hardly been in business and they're already donating donating to the community, which was really nice. I think it was crowded Saturday, wait till Friday night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's another freebie. Yeah. I talked to the one security guard up there, and he said he had a family would come in with like five people, and the father would say, well, they, they get gift cards too. And the guy said, no, it's one per family. <laughs> and they had some hassle with him, so people always want to beat the <coughs> Okay, workshop items. Mr. Morrison, you're going to explain the do not knock registry. Yes, sir. Um, about this time of year, we begin to get inundated with uh, requests for solicitation permits. Uh, these are individuals or corporations who wish to uh, apply their wares door to door here in Murraysville. Um, uh, they have uh, uh, freedom of speech protection under the Constitution to solicit. Um, and more often than not, uh, once they hit the street, we begin to get phone calls from residents. Why are they knocking on my door? Now, they are required uh, to have a uh, photograph identification on them. Um, some do, some don't. Um, if they're not properly, if they don't provide the permit or have the identification card and we're notified of that, we have the police went out on patrol, check on them. Uh, but nevertheless, it still happens. Uh, we were able to suspend uh, the issuance of door-to-door -door solicitation during the COVID period uh, conveniently, uh, but uh, uh, I don't think that excuse is going to last much longer. So uh, we did some research and found online that there are several communities that have a do not knock registry, uh, which I thought was kind of a novel idea. Um, and uh, essentially what it is, is residents uh, would notify the municipality that they do not wish to have solicitors knocking on their door, and uh, we would maintain an up-to-date list here, and that list would be distributed to the individuals who receive the permit. Uh, and I provided for you in the uh, meeting documents file a sample of the uh, code that uh, Cranberry uh, has in place uh, to enforce this. So I throw the, uh, the idea out to council if it's something uh, that you would want to consider. And if, if you would want to consider it, then we would have to amend the solicitation ordinance here in the municipality. Uh, and if that's the case, then we would develop the ordinance along the lines of uh, 
Cranberry Township Ordinance and uh, bring it forward to Council. I, I love the idea, but I have five questions <laughs> or five kind of concerns that I'd like to raise for consideration. Um, the first, uh, just the, the general list in, that they create for this do not knock registry. What sort of information is gathered about community members and then shared with the individual companies or those knocking? Is it simply the, the street well, number? The name and address. I would like to see if we could amend that to include maybe the house number and street name, but not necessarily to have the family's information. Uh, I really dislike extremely when I have folks knock on my door and they say, um, oh, I was just helping your neighbor. We just, and they, well, who's my neighbor? Oh, well, you know, and they, they don't know the name because they didn't actually just sell something to my neighbor, but they're pretending that they did. And frankly, I don't want anybody on my property saying to one of my children, you know, Gregory, Gregory Corns, or even Corns, I know you, I know your family. And then having you know, my child or other people's children think that, that he knows them because they know their name. I, I think I'd really like to see just house numbers and street names. Okay. Um, I'm also curious on that same vein, how that information is updated. Is it, is it annually? Is this something that new residents would create, you know, they would register as they move in as part of the welcome packet that we provide, and then it's only updated when a new family moves in? Well, you know, for a long time, I have been an advocate of having a community wagon here. Right. Uh, and uh, have never been able to find an organization interested in doing that. We really don't have a welcome wagon here. Uh, we would publicize this on the website through uh, social media, uh, through the newspaper, um, and uh, residents would be welcome to call in uh, to add their address to the list. Uh, I don't know of how else to get it out there. Probably once or twice a year I speak to the realtors group. Uh, and inform them of things like this uh, that are available. Uh, but uh, other than that, I'm not sure how we would get it out. Okay. Uh, next question. I believe political door knocking would be excluded, right? Yes. So we would need to just make sure that residents understood that even if they're on the do not knock list, politically they're excluded. 13-202.1, uh, it mentions that the chief of police is responsible for investigating uh, prior to issuance of permits. Um, well, for Cranberry. the process used to be that whenever uh, an individual came in for a permit, mm -hmm. that we would send the name and information provided to us to the police, mm -hmm. and they would do a check through what's known the, as the mm -hmm. clean system. Mm -hmm. But there's been recent changes in the law that do not permit that kind of inquiry mm -hmm. anymore. Um, so uh, we uh, do give it to the police department. Uh, we check our records locally, mm -hmm. uh, but that's the extent of it. Okay. Um, so on that same vein, that was my next question. Is there something that we are already checking into or could include to exclude issuing licenses to registered sex offenders or folks with violent criminal records? Only if we have information here, and that information is readily available on the website, so I think that that would be uh, included. Okay. I'd like to think that our, I hate to put more on our police department, but I'd like to think if they're asked to investigate that they could check for that and not issue permits. Other three? So Jim, you would first of all get their name and address. Of the, they would get the name and address of that house they have to visit? Or, or, we, could, oh, I, or we could pull the name off and it could yeah, what, the street. Uh, Jamie's number. proposed, excuse me, that they only be provided the address and that's fine. Right, just their, just their address and that's correct. Now this organization, once they get a permit from you, do they have to tell you what they're, that naturally they have to say, we're an organization and blah, 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 and we do this? Mm -hmm. And that, would that be televised? I mean, uh, in the newspaper that people know that's the association that's coming around? Uh, uh, we have never uh, published uh, the permit information. Okay. Uh, there is um, um, an application form that's used now uh, as part of the process. They identify the organization and the reason that they're soliciting. Um, but that's the extent of it. Yeah. So I have a question about the actual, the do not knock part. It said that the uh, penalty would be just a revoking of the license. What if there was a mistake? Because some of these kids that go around 
they're kind of young, they're in college, they're hauling books, they're trying to sell, and they just knock on the wrong house by accident. Is there any kind of like warning in place first or, hey, be more careful? You know, I hate to see these kids who are trying to support themselves in college mm -hmm. getting their license revoked and getting in trouble with a company that they're employed with. You know, well, yeah, I, I think uh, we're, we're sort of... <laughs> I just want to make sure it's not too, you know, strict on Aggressive. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would just mention that I'm going way back just because of my age, but my dad was a fuller brush man in the 60s, and he made his livelihood for a while. Mm -hmm. And my mother was uh, Stanley Home Products, which didn't know door to door, but they had home parties and so mm -hmm. forth. So uh, they served a function back then. I know mm -hmm. things are different now. I'm for a registry. But uh, just to, also people are out there making a living too, so. Uh, this is basically the privacy of the resident and their yeah. residential property and nobody really wants mm -hmm. to uh, deny someone an opportunity to make a living, but uh, there are people that just don't want to be approached. Mm -hmm. And I'm old enough to remember the chocolate nuts coffee, coffee guy used to beat on doors. Uh -huh. <laughs> I remember the rainbow sweeper. Oh, yeah. uh, to piggyback on a question that Jamie asked, there was a note, it was uh, 13207, is it the individual knocker who has their license revoked or is it the whole business if there are? Um, it would probably be the business that, um, uh, that we would send her on. Okay. Uh, that, uh, again, was an example. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll try to put something together along those lines. and We can open it up for debate at that point uh, once that's developed. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, Jim, it's all yours. All right. 13A. Yeah. Okay, next we have uh, <coughs> nothing for engineering, community development, parks, works. Public works, I'm sorry. It looks like we're about to 13A. Okay. Would anyone like to make a motion for 13A? Yes, I'd like to make a motion. Consider authorization to advertise ordinance number 1058-22, an ordinance to amend the code of the municipality of Murraysville, chapter 210 thereof, entitled Vehicles and Traffic as follows. To add to Schedule 13, parking prohibited at all times on Carousel Drive from Coval Court to Manor Road. Second. Second. We had to re-advertise. I'm sorry. Max. Matt. We had to re-advertise the ordinance. Uh, it was incorrectly stated in there, the intersecting streets. Uh, we had Surrey Drive in there, not Carousel Drive. Yeah, it was on Surrey Drive the last time, right? Uh, yes, that's just, correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, any questions about that? Nope. No, sir. Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Need a motion now for 13B. I'll make okay. a motion to consider affirmation mm -hmm. of the police captain's agreement between the municipality of Murraysville and Thomas Kaczynski. Second. Thank you, Jamie, uh, Jamie and Matt. Uh, this is something we usually do in January. However, uh, as you're aware, Captain Tappy uh, has uh, retired. His official retirement date is June 1st. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, but on the chief's recommendation, the current of the mayor, uh, the, the offers to made to uh, Detective Sergeant Thomas Kuzinski to assume the position of captain. Uh, and this puts in place the agreement uh, for him uh, as effective June 1, 2022. I just Any Questions? All in favor? I had a comment and a question, Aye. actually. I'm so sorry, go ahead. It's all right. Amy? So, and, and to be very clear, um, I think the world of Thomas Kaczynski and think he will do excellent in this role. So this question is not about him or his capabilities or responsibility in any capacity. But I notice in our agreement uh, particularly paragraphs two and three, 
that if for any reason we eliminate the position or if we were dissatisfied with his service, which again, I don't question his service at all, but for the municipality of Murraysville, uh, if we were to eliminate the position or were dissatisfied with his service, we're providing the option for him to go back into his previous role. Would that include if there were ever a concern with an officer, take him out of the equation, with an officer with maybe gross dereliction of duty or, or something like that? Are we still preserving a, a role for them or is that somehow handled differently through the... I mean, if an officer chose to... Do something horrible. We'll just... I'm sorry? Do something horrible. We'll just kind of leave it blank. Oh, no, it would go through the disciplinary process. So we wouldn't have to worry necessarily that we are required to restore him to his role. Right. Okay. Anybody else? All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. 13C, need a motion. Make a motion to advertise ordinance number 1059-22, an ordinance accepting a lease for oil and gas rates for approximately 40.51 acres of municipally owned property. Tax numbers 49-19-00-044-045-077-078-079, known as the Staymates Cabin Property. Second. Thank you, Jamie and Jason. Uh, we solicited bids for the gas rights on these uh, five particular properties and um, uh, received one bid from Olympus Energy. This is part of the um, Poseidon um, acreage that they tap. Uh, this land is mostly around the Staymates cabin uh, and um, would recommend that uh, we enter into a lease agreement. Uh, their price was uh, $2,000 per acre for the lease and 16% royalty on the gas harvested. Okay. Any questions? I have a, I have a question. Okay, Jane. Um, I don't have a question about the actual leasing. Mm -hmm. The oil and gas, I'm all for that. I don't have a problem with it. But I, at the February 2nd meeting, I brought this up when we had originally opened this up for discussion about the code, because it's in it's in 13C and 13D, the same code in the same language, where in our code we keep calling it sale as opposed to lease. And I looked up the difference in law between the verbiage of sale and lease, and they're very different. So I just want to, and I know that we're a, a secondary, uh, or we used to be a secondary class township, right? So we can revert to whatever second that class is. Township, or second class yes, township. Right. Okay, I knew it was something like that. Sorry. So I know we can, but I think it would be important if we were to change our code to mirror what was in that, because I looked, I, I have a copy of it, and it covers leasing, letting, all those things. I just wanted to make a note of that. I think it's important that we do that. Solicitor, would you like to comment on that? <laughs> the question again was the concern between the lease and the deed. The, the, the term offered for sale as opposed to for lease, because the uniform uh, commercial code defines them very differently. There, well, I don't want to get too complicated on this. There I'm is a difference an between the just... lease and the deed, no question about it. Right. Except that if you're dealing with oil and gas rights because they have special privileges so it becomes an estate for years. It goes on indefinitely so long as they're so long as they're producing. So it goes on indefinitely. So you do treat them differently in the law and the courts do also. Okay, just because it's oil and gas. Yes. Okay. So the wording as uh, Jamie brought up is sufficient. Meaning I, I when I saw it I said, well it's a lease, but they say sale. So what, you know, what's the confusion? You're, you're conveying your, for a fee your oil and gas rights to them to produce. So they're leasing essentially the, the ability to access the property to drill, but they're purchasing the, sur the, the supply that the municipality has, and that supply being the gas. So that's considered a good. Is that why it's different? I'm sorry. It's so it would be considered a good then, a goods? No. How does well, that work? Oil and gas is not considered. A, it doesn't come under the Uniform Commercial Code. Okay. It's separate into itself. 
what we're selling, the property that is, shall be offered for sale is the gas, correct? It's, right. not, it's not the land, so the, I think the language is that we're selling the gas, but they're leasing the land. Well, you're, you're, not, you're not selling leasing the gas, the, because we, we don't know if there's any gas there or not. Right, we're, just, uh, we're, leasing, the, we're leasing the land. We, I just we, wanted they to... agree to produce it and market it, and we get a percentage. Okay. They're selling the right to the gas, right? They're, they're acquiring the right to produce and then sell it. Right. So for that, you you do not treat this one. Uh, you, you you go through with the requirements that that are in place for oil, oil and gas law. Okay. So you, you don't treat it as a typical lease okay. under the Landlord Tenant Act, for example. Okay. Doesn't come within that. Okay. Well, I'm glad you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so then my other question would be to follow up. Is there anything that we do lease that's not oil and gas that would re require us to have something like that in our code, in the municipality? Well, at this point, if it's in, if it's in, it's in our home rule charter that if it's a sale of, or lease of land, in effect. There, okay, so sale covers lease. I would because it's really for a term of years. Okay, it's the equivalent. You're, you're actually acquiring rights to that ground for that period. You can occupy, you can do whatever you want. It's in that lease. So I would still require that to be done by an ordinance. One of our one of our home rule charter provisions refers to that being done by ordinance. Okay. We do that for, for this oil and gas lease. Okay. All right. I still talk to you after. I'm still a little confused about the, the, the law language. <coughs> well, we're gonna lease. Right, George? You, you're gonna lease, yes. Okay. Okay, any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I, I would just say for the matter of the record that, that uh, the Home Rule Charter, you just don't change by ordinance. That has to be done by a referendum. Okay. So uh, to go down that road is, yeah, is a difficult work. road. There, there are items within the Home Rule Charter that we've outgrown or uh, probably need to be looked at, but uh, uh, it's just not a simple act of council. Uh, to change the code or the home rule charter. Okay. Okay. I looked at the lease. I mean, the lease seemed all. I mean, I know, legally good, but. Okay. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Need a motion for thirteen D. Anybody? I'd like to make a motion to consider authorization to advertise ordinance number 1060-22, an ordinance accepting a lease for oil and gas rights for approximately 8.87 acres of municipal, municipal owned property, tax number 49-20-00-0-07, General Forbes Court. Seconding motion. Okay. Thank you, Jason and Carl. Uh, the same circumstances, uh, bids were received, uh, the uh, lease rate of $2,000 per acre, 16% royalty. This property uh, was conveyed to the municipality as part of the General Forbes uh, subdivision development. Any questions? I have, I have no questions. I would just propose that when we vote, if we could vote perhaps on 13 CMD. I think they're, they're essentially the same topic, right? I'm sorry? We didn't vote on 13C, right? So when we vote, can we, we just? Yeah, we did 13C. I was confused too. <laughs> did we? Did we vote on it? It wasn't a roll call. No, it was all in favor. Oh, okay. Perfect. Yeah, we did it. That's a few of us. Okay. 13D. Any questions? I know, right? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Jamie. Aye. <laughs> Which Jamie? <laughs> Any opposed? Thank you. Okay, community development, 14A, <coughs> anybody? I'll make a motion <laughs> to consider approval of resolution number 756-22, a resolution amending the Municipalities Act uh, 537 sewers facility plan for the Murray Corporate Park Development, Mellon Road. Second. Did I hear you wrong? Was it? What was the number, Matt? Uh, the agenda number is correct, 756. Thank you, Matt and Jamie. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. 756. We are all just having an off. Thank you, Matt and Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
this is um, a routine uh, matter because of the, uh, uh, the no tap order from DEP. Uh, each time uh, a new development comes through uh, to increase the number of taps available uh, for development, we have to amend our Act 537 plan. <coughs> Any questions or comments? Mm -mm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. <coughs> 15, engineering. 15A. Make a motion to consider reducing the letter of credit held to ensure completion of the required improvements. What's that? Am I reading the wrong one? 15A? Yeah, you're right. You're, you're right. right. You're right. Uh, on here, it's in a bond, right? 15A, you're okay, right. Okay, I'll, I'll continue. Sorry. Uh, required improvements at the Reagan Ridge development in the amount of three hundred nine thousand four hundred seventy-nine and fifty cents. No you, did, you did skip one. Yeah, fifteen A. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking. I'm going right. Fifteen A. Oh, it got changed from. This is fifteen A. Mm -hmm. yeah, it got the changed. Agenda, though, it's the 15. briefing versus the agenda. Okay, my apologies. That's okay. okay. Sorry. Consider the reduction. I'll make. A motion to consider the reduction of a bond being held to ensure completion of the required improvements at Murraysville Racquet Club in the amount of $56,040. Jamie, want to second that? I'll let someone else take it. Second. <laughs> I've been so vocal. Thank you, Jamie Ling and Jamie Lee. <laughs> All right. Our favorite ones, Jamie. Mm. We have uh, a nice is, lot over uh, there. It has been inspected by the engineer. The asphalt's been completed. The fencing and landscaping are yet to be done. Mm. We did pave the road behind the building. Yeah, it looks mm. nice. Finally. Yeah. I drove down it yesterday. It <laughs> makes a big difference. I drove through, too. I, I see the Compionetics is now in the building. What? Compionetics is now the business in the building. Yeah. Ah, that helps. Yeah, that's nice over there. Sure. It's getting better, Jamie. <laughs> any, any questions or comments? Carl. No, uh, oh. I know Jason uh, works for Cognetics. So I did. I had a question on the, the uh, was that the building too, like with on the exterior of the building facing the walking trail that there were issues? I mean, was, was, <laughs> is that inclusive of the bond or no? No, that is not part of the bond. That's okay. Just for the That's something totally different. Yeah. Okay. Previous. I didn't know if that was completed as well or not. Oh, well, it was completed years ago. Any questions? I don't think it's. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Now, Jamie Lynn, 15B. You want me to do it again? <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah, I'm make sure I'm doing the right one. I'll make a motion to consider reducing the letter of credit held to ensure completion of the required improvements at the Reagan Ridge development in the amount of $309,479.50. Second. Oh, thank you, Jamie and Jamie. Uh, this is the work that's continuing on the townhouses up on Wilson Road. Despite all the rain, they continue to move forward. Uh, it has been inspected and recommended uh, that the bond be reduced. Did they give you an idea what those condos are going to cost? What you heard is you right. Tony? Yes. 750 and up? Is that That's right? That's what we were told. Yeah. All right. Carl, I got you down for one. <laughs> <coughs> Any don't questions? Your, don't hold your breath. Comments? <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Okay. 16. Bless you. Public Works. I'll make a motion to consider authorization to advertise for bids for asphalt products for use by the Public Works Department. Second. Thank you, Jason and Jamie. Mac. Orange. <laughs> Mac and Jamie. <laughs> Mac. Mac, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm into the Jamie's. I can't get away over here. <laughs> Good evening, all. Um, to recap, what had happened here a few weeks ago, staff got together and spoke about, uh, and we had the discussion here, of super pave. We're, we're not in favor of super pave. We've done studies in the past and wanted to move towards an ID2 wearing course for use in public works only. Um, so we came back to council and asked to uh, accept 
all the other award all the other bids in the hold out asphalt so staff came back and redone the super pave spec to an id2 wearing which was the older uh tighter course a little more oil tighter tighter stone gap mm. and we look to put that out for bids with your approval we happen to have local examples of both types on the roads just for us to have a frame of reference uh school road would be one and school road would be a super pave all of school road or yes okay. and uh, that was done in 2016 mm -hmm. and the piece that's broke up the most was done in 2017. Uh, a example of the id2 wearing would be berlin farm road mm -hmm. um, that was put down by public works totally wrong than what it should have been put down it wasn't tack coded it was put down with a road grader instead of a paver mm -hmm. that road has seven years time on it and it's starting to just pothole right now mm -hmm. so we're very very happy with that material and that was a very good uh place to try that out so is there a difference in cost between the two let me explain the predicament that we're in. Uh, the, the majority of our road paving program is paid with liquid fuel slums, which mm -hmm. we receive from the state of Pennsylvania. The requirement of the liquid the use of liquid fuel slums is that we use PennDOT specified material. So the 408 spec, which is the PennDOT specification, requires the super pay. What happens is the plants, batch plants now, because PennDOT uses the super pave everywhere, only produces the super pave product. Oh. It's very difficult to get the ID2 top, so it's not sort of boxed in. We pay for the asphalt that we're addressing tonight through general fund monies, not for our PennDOT liquid fuels monies. So that's why we're able to do this. Okay. Awesome. The longevity is, like I said, we've already done our homework on it. I think we're getting more for our dollar. So, just for my curiosity, what is the difference in cost between the two? I'm going to take a guess. I'm going to say probably $8. Per? Per ton. Per ton. Okay. Which is about what we spent on, we also did another study more up to date and probably more done with the paver uh, council woman corns windover road was actually done with a uh, marshall mix and id2 wearing we're also watching that road for longevity reasons mm -hmm. um, we increased the spec on it and that was more of a marshall mix so that could be one that you could take a look at give you a good idea because that was done correctly that was done with a attack coat and put down with a paver on more of a uh, uniform coat. Road grader, if it bumps or moves or somebody bounces a lever, you could get a little variation in the uh, thickness. But How many tons do we go through in a year? We're going to go to expect for 500 tons of top and 500 tons of binder. Uh, the top would be what's called the wearing course. That's the smooth course on top. And the binder, of course, would be the course underneath of it. It has the bigger rock. So um, we were going to spec it for 500 tons of each, but we only are budgeted for $30,000. So when we get to 30000 we're done. So we'll keep it within the limits of the budget. Now, is Export going to do the same thing you're doing? Yes. Export does very little with the hand paving. They'll, they're only a couple tons, but like I said, I could, we could be very well up to 500 tons. We're doing a lot more with the bigger patching. Last year, we actually rented a road paver, and when we're using that kind of, uh, we use a lot of tonnage at that point. We consume our budget very quickly. Bill, does the uh, like the difference in that super paver to to the other one in the in what you're saying is you know there's less spacing maybe between those. Is that due, is the wear, do you think, due to salt? Is it more because we're, we're such a hot and cold, you know, climate here? Or is it just, or is it the wear of the cars on it? The super pave was actually designed to drain. What they wanted to do was 
the polymers that were used to, to create this actually are very coarse. And um, like I said, if you live in an older plan, you can notice the difference of how tight that asphalt is. If you go out and look at even Sardis Road, you'll get spots where it's very coarse. And that's the way that material was made. And there's a lot of good in super pave, especially the base course. Um, for some of you that have driven a while, if, especially on Route 22 at the red lights, if you remember the old dips, once you got to the red light, you would do one of these because it was really dipped. Now, the super pave has taken that away. It's built the toughness at the bottom course to take that out. You don't notice that anymore as you used to do years ago. So it's good and bad, but... Um, is, the just, is the thought, does PennDOT use that maybe because it's maybe better for highways than it is for, than it is for local yeah, community right uh, yeah. Local. Yeah. Peter. Yeah, that makes sense. Is that what you used on Old 22? Yes. Because that's the best that's ever held up, hyphen. Mm -hmm. That paving job was good. Well, it's talking about five years. So. <laughs> I, that's the biggest difference. You know, for example, the plan I live in, that road was paved when that plan was originally developed 27 years ago. That road has not been repaved yeah. in 27 years. And it doesn't have any holes in it. It has cracks, but no holes. Route 20, or Old William Penn Highway gets paved at least every eight years. Yeah. A lot heavier traffic. A lot different material. Yeah. Mm. A lot Five of school road. Uh, when we paved that, what? Eight? The first piece was done, I think, 2015. I think I said 16, but I think the, the hill was even, it might even even. So we didn't even get uh, seven years out of that road. But the one that's the worst would be between North Hills Road and uh, Old 22. That piece is just absolutely shot. That was done in 2017. I have no idea how we're going to try to bind that together for next year. Uh, we're not going to do anything with it this year because the bridge, of course, which should be replaced. Uh, engineering is hoping to do the entire road next year. But to try to bubble gum that road back together, is it's going to be a real task. And it's I, It's got to be the material... Okay, any other questions? I have one more question. Sorry. Sure. So you're saying the underlayment that's below the, the top layer? You're talking yes. there's two two separate layers, five hundred tons of each you Correct. expect. Is that bottom layer the same? Like doesn't the top layer we're looking at a variant in between what pen dot specs and what we're gonna use, but is that underlayment? The same. The binder course. Yes. It's the binder course is made up of a bigger rock. It's more of a like a driveway stone, like a two B limestone. But is it the same no matter which is overlayment? The composition of the material. Yeah, the question I think is well, is the mix different? Yes, the yes. composition of what makes that material would be different. Between the 408 spec and Correct. the ID spec. Right, but the but the underneath yeah, it's the still different. It's, it's, still it's different. the same. Right, right. There's different so amounts of oils, okay. and um, what do they call that term, the, the roof? It's not brick bag. Uh, when they use... Wrap. Yeah, the wrap. There's different percentages of oil and wrap between the 408 spec and the ID spec, whether it be the binder or the wearing. Okay, that's what I was, I was wondering. This, this <laughs> is you also... You still use that liquid fuel yes, for the that's under... Correct. That's what I was... That's correct. And again, this is spec with an all virgin material mix, so there's no reclaims, reclaims or having troubles. That's what's actually taking a lot of this and making it come apart. With the virgin mix, it's, it's virgin material, the stone, the sand, the oil. The super pay spec permits them, I think it's 20, up to 20%, 20, Yes. up to 20% of stuff like roof shingles or other recyclable materials that have oils in them. So you're not getting, in comparison to the, what Bill's referring to as the virgin mix, where it's just oil, sand, and stone, you have 20% in the uh, super paved mix that's recycled material, essentially. Okay. And I noticed you said we were watching our roads to look at the wear and the difference between the overlayment, the difference overlayment that you're using. Are other communities doing this as well? Do you know? Do you even know? <laughs> 
No, I don't know. Other than uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, attend a road master's uh, symposium in Hershey this week. Ooh. And uh, luckily I got to speak. And I did bring it up. And it caused about a 10-minute discussion. Unfortunately, the people from PennDOT sitting at the front table weren't too moved on it. It doesn't look like <laughs> it's going anywhere. But uh, I think there's other people that uh, maybe I'll start a crusade here. But I... I think the material needs changed. Okay. We can't. We can't keep. We can't keep up with it. Well, Monroeville has a specification for Virgin Mix, don't they? I think Monroeville did a little something like we're trying to do here, to where right. we, they're going to buy it out of general funds, and they they use um, their spec calls for a batch plant mix, which is where we have been getting our material from a, a certain vendor. Any other questions? Okay. Colin Fabier? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, Bill, thank you. <coughs> thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks Bill. Bill. Okay. Jim, any old business? No, oh, sir. Any new business? No. Okay, we're going to adjourn for the executive session. No action is expected. No action without you. No. Thank you.